Hi everyone, this is a quick overview video of the Seagull 4V1 series medium format TLR camera. TLR means twin lens reflex. As you can see there are two lenses on the front of this camera. The top one is for viewing the image. Uh, the lower one is for capturing the image onto the film. And if you are using a TLR ca camera for the first time, you need to really consider the, the difference in the position of these lenses. So what you'll be viewing will be slightly higher than what's being captured. You don't want to waste any film by um, you know, not taking that into consideration. So just to quickly go over the different uh, functions or features of this camera. At the bottom there is a, a circular knob and if you push in this little lever here by the arrow and rotate this will open it so you can put in your new roll of film. Uh, there should be a roll of film in, in there. If there's not, you're going to have to source one as that's what the, the film is going to be taken up onto. And likewise, you will just turn this to the C position. There are Chinese characters, uh, Kai and Guan, which mean o open and close, and there's O and C, which are self-explanatory. Um, don't know why I had to throw that in there, but I can speak Chinese, I guess. Uh, here is to prevent light leaking onto the film, but it's it's um it's a red a window of red glass or plastic, so it allows you to ro to roll up the film here with a take up lever and or take up knob until you see the relevant information in either either frame. Um, so for each each picture you take. You, you'll start winding and then you quickly put it up in a don't do it in direct sunlight as you'll ruin the film but it will show you where the next frame is ready to be shot and you can close it again take the next picture and that will save you from uh, doing double exposure onto your negatives onto one frame um, these here are the spool release knobs so when you've opened the back of the camera and you want to get the spool out you pull this out and shake the camera or get in there and pull out the, the spool itself. On the left side here is the focusing the focusing knob and it goes from one meter to infinity and it's got the the f-stops here or the aperture sizes to allow you to understand the how the depth of field will be affected. Um, on the top here this is the, the, the cool part it's where you can view into what you're going to be taking a picture of. Um, you can't really see it very well here, as yeah, the light's not so good. But it's a very bright image that you actually get to see. Um, it is mirrored, so it will take some getting used to if you're not used to using a TLR camera. But a great thing about this camera also is there's a focusing split screen in the middle. Is that what it's called? It's like two semicircles where you can align the vertical lines of an image to make sure that they meet up and are in focus and you can get really close in there with this silver button here which you push down or literally down not in and it will bring up a little magnifying glass and you can see in that much more detail and get your images pin sharp and another feature of this top part is on the seagull panel here you push it up and you can put that to your eye and use it as as you would a disposable camera I guess you know that it's, it's a straight through viewfinder of what you're an approximation of what you're going to be seeing and yeah this is a really well made piece of equipment uh, very solid very smooth um, yeah it's made in China but it's really well made. They put a lot of effort into their engineering of this. Um, the lenses themselves are 3.5 aperture and that's the maximum aperture um, to f22 so 3.5 to f22 if you don't know the, the difference between what an aperture of 3.5 and 
22 are. It's worth looking up because it's quite important. Um, this doesn't have a light meter on it, so you will need to get a, a light meter to help you uh, understand the exposure of what you're going to be taking. For me, I use a digital camera actually. Depending on the ASA rating of the film, say it was 400, I would use a digital camera, set, set the ISO to 400, and set the aperture to something, say, uh, say 5.6, so then I'd adjust this aperture here. Notice there is actually an aperture lever missing on here. That broke off before I actually bought the camera. Um, I can still adjust it with a paper clip, but there should be something here. <clears throat> and yeah, once I've done that, then I can see the shutter speed, which my digital camera is telling me it should be by like half pressing the shutter of the digital camera and then whatever the shutter speed was I can adjust here and it goes from bulb which is uh, open as long as you hold the, the shutter release to 300 300th of a second and if you're not entirely sure about that it's something you should look up because getting the right exposure is the most important thing for filming film photography as you only really get one chance per picture. Here to fire the shutter once you've focused in everything and got the framing correct of what you're going to be taking a picture of, you push this lever down here until it clicks and let it rise back up. Um, if you've got your shutter speed and your aperture set cor correctly and then you literally just press this this here and that will fire the shutter for you. Um, there is a timer down here too. I'm not sure how long it's for, maybe 10 seconds or something. Let's give it that a try now. So that's just something you push along until it stops. And you press the shutter once you've got the settings correct. And is it going to take? Yep, there we go. Maybe it isn't a, a really correct value of time. It's probably quite old and outdated and the gears are a bit worn out but yeah, it gives you enough time to jump into the frame if you're taking a group photo or if you're taking a long, longer exposure it prevents camera shake uh, so that's it basically all the features I think I've covered there is a hot hot shoe flash thing I think that's just something for putting in a flash I've never actually used a flash on a TLR camera it seems like a bit too much for me uh, and I think here is where you plug in the flash cord. Like I said, I could be completely wrong on that. Um, also, this is the uh, to fire the shutter, and you can get a a manual release where you can screw this in. So that's why it looks a bit just like a, a cylinder of metal. It allows you to put in a, a remote shutter. So if you're you've got the camera on the tripod, you can can stand away and take the picture and prevent you shaking it. So yeah, altogether a great camera. Um, I'm actually going to put this up for sale soon as I can't really afford to continue shooting film. But if you are to get a TLR camera and you can't afford the likes of Mamiya or Rolly Flex, this is a, a great alternative at least for getting into it. and. Yeah, the, the 3.5 aperture isn't as good as maybe you, what you get on a Mamiya with the 2.8, but it still should give you a nice shallow depth of field. And medium format being what it is, the, be the, the pictures are always very beautiful and so so high in resolution. When, when you scan in the negatives, you'd be surprised at the level of detail you can get. So yeah, um, that's the Seagull or hi -O. 4B1 series TLR camera. If you've got any questions that I didn't cover or something I didn't explain so well, which I think is inevitable, is a, this is probably a terrible video, uh, just leave a comment below or send a message or something and I'll, I'll try and answer. Okay, thank you very much.